I actually just walked past another runner who just stopped to work out and I kind of gave him a little, uh, little double eyebrow raise for like, you know, just like kindred spirits. Uh, but he looked at me like I was some sort of Hello, Rich Keeble here and welcome back to The Documentary. It's real life events providing a factual report on a particular subject that is literally the dictionary definition of a documentary, okay? And so this is the penultimate episode which will take us right up to the marathon itself. Of course, this could be the final episode if I die during the marathon. <laughs> Imagine that. So in the last episode, I did that really quite impressive 30K run at the end of week eight. Week nine consisted of three easy runs, some intervals, uh, a long run of 17 kilometers. I also did some strength work, some body weight exercises. This week I was also fortunate to be working again and I was supposed to be doing three days on a shoot, but the Friday got moved because of the storm uh, to the following week. Here's a little glimpse of me running during that storm. It's certainly pretty blowy still. I think I've managed to keep on the pavement so far. But, uh, I'm glad I didn't go out earlier. Oh good, now it's raining. It really is a lovely run. Gosh, wasn't that something? Now this week was interesting because it was the first time I actually had a bit of soreness in my legs. I had a bit of soreness in my right shin muscle. I figured it was because of the 30k run and the strength work. On Sunday's long run I also tried out some of the High Five tablets which I purchased ahead of the Brighton Marathon where I believe they are to be given out. After the long run I had to go and pick up my wife and children from the airport uh, in some quite horrible weather conditions. After the drive, the soreness in my leg appeared to have increased, uh, perhaps as a result of the driving. Then we move into week 10, where I had two easy runs, a set of intervals, and a half marathon race. So my shoot day on Friday had to be moved to this Tuesday, which also was on a day where I was traveling back up to Edinburgh to do that other job that you may remember from a couple of episodes ago. So I was back in the gym in Edinburgh, uh, doing some running and some weights, that sort of thing. So let's get to the point. And on Sunday, I went and did the Brighton half marathon with my friend Dale. My legs were still a little bit sore, but I managed to warm up sufficiently and didn't encounter any soreness on the actual run. The race generally went okay but the last 5k along the seafront had an incredible headwind which uh, really slowed me down. Let's have a little look at that race. Just waiting to start. One of those pricks talking into a GoPro. So I'm at seven and a half K in, kind of on pace for my 155. So that's 11 K done. Still on target. Feel okay. A bit like I've run 11 K, but. Let's 
10 miles done. Just 5k to go. Struggling a bit. Not sure about the 155. But then the two should still be on. It's about a kilometre to go. Well, I haven't seen a sign anywhere. Up two should still be on the table. The finish. Pretty horrible weather week in general, really. It was uh, it was raining up in Scotland, and pretty windy everywhere in the UK, as I understand it. As we move into week 11, my legs were still feeling a bit heavy, although with some good old shin and calf stretching, my shin actually was feeling a lot better by the end of the week. I did skip some runs this week, but I did do a 20 mile run on the Sunday. So let's have a look at that. So I'm just over 3k in. I had to loop back because I realised uh, I forgot to put the SD card back in the GoPro after downloading some footage yesterday. I don't feel amazingly energetic today. Uh, perhaps it's just the thought of doing 20 miles. But you know, I've done nearly 3k already. There's only 29 left. I'm just going to run down the road and then run back. I've got loads of water today, uh, about a litre and a half, about the maximum capacity of the bladder. So as an experiment, I haven't got any Lucas aid today, just got the water and gels. So let's we'll see how we get on, it's quite sunny. Such park. Just done over 8k, so uh, about a quarter of the way through. Nice downhill bit. I'm just thinking how I'm gonna have to do it on the way back when well, it's uphill. That's how hills work. So I've done about 11 and a half kilometers average pace. Just under six minutes per kilometer. Feeling okay. Uh, right leg still a little stiff in the shin. Uh, but not causing any problems. I'm just outside Epsom now where I grew up. Just past uh, Kiln Lane Industrial Estate where I used to work in the Sainsbury's. We had two gels. And yeah, we're still going. We're still going! We're still going! I think we're in Ashstead now. Very nice part of the world. Very expensive. Very posh. Oh, and a bit hilly. I'm gonna have to run back up this hill. I'll worry about that in a few kilometers though. Okay, so I've been running for about an hour and a half, just over, and I've just done 16.1 kilometers. So we're kind of halfway. Uh, so I think I'm going to turn around now and head back. I'm in Ashstead Village now, so I think that's a good point. Oh, yeah, that hill was definitely easier on the way down. <sighs> So 
it's funny, uh, just past the McDonald's on the edge of High Street, it reminded me uh, a few years ago, I did a McDonald's advert. It was a competition uh, where members of the public design their own burgers. My advert was the first one advertising something called the Big Uno Burger. And it was only on a week and a half, the advert, but it was on a lot. And I met some friends of mine in the pub in Epsom, and it was on the telly twice when we were there. So after a few beers, we thought, let's go in the McDonald's and uh, order my burger. I said, uh, oh, uh, I guess I uh, probably don't have to pay for this, do I? And the girl behind the counter was like, well, yeah, that'll be uh, 2 99 please. And my mates were like, oh, he advertises the burger. Uh. I didn't get it for free. I had to pay for it. Just coming up to 25K. I'm starting to feel it in my hips a bit now. And my lower back. But uh, not far now. After 5K, I'll have done my furthest ever run. So we'll, we'll get that far and then we'll think about the final two. Oh. <sighs> Struggling. Wait this bus. Oh. Especially with hills like this. And these headwinds. Oh. Bloody hell. So, we've crossed the 30 threshold. This is now the longest run I've ever done. And that's three hours running. Oh. My legs, my hips, my ass, and my back will be very pleased when I stop in a few minutes. Oh, oh that's it. That's it. Oh, that's it. Oh, 32.2 kilometers. Oh, oh, that was a struggle. Oh. But we did it. I can still just about walk. So I'm gonna walk home. Oh. Oh, 20 miles. So, on the day, just be another 10K from this point. Oh, easy. As we get into week 12, I did skip a couple of runs, uh, did some intervals, and I did another long run on Sunday, which was supposed to be three hours, uh, but I cut it short and just did 25 kilometers in two and a half hours because I just couldn't be bothered to do any more. But I did some cycling in the week, so I felt that perhaps I'd made up for it. Week 13 was where things started to get a little exciting because I bought some new shoes. And these shoes in particular, I can't pronounce the brand name, but I can pronounce the other two words. Anyway, these shoes are a lot lighter and made for speed work and races. They have a nylon plate in them. And I did find that they actually do feel a lot lighter and give me a lot more energy return. At the end of the week, um, I was supposed to do a two and a half hour run, but I was booked into the Hampton Court Palace half. Thank you, 
I'll take a large, thank you. 149 and a bit. Very happy with that. About six minutes better than Brighton. And uh, 12 and a bit minutes better than the last time I did this. Very happy. So I wanted to try and beat my Brighton half marathon time, uh, which I did successfully. Last time I did Hampton Court Palace half, I got a parking ticket because I was late to the race and had to park in a bus stop. But this time there are no such problems as I cycle to get the train and um, cycle home again after the race, uh, doing about 20 kilometers on the bike in total, which I felt made up for my lack of the extra half hour of running uh, as stipulated by the program. And then weeks 14 and 15 were sort of starting to taper, easing it off a little bit before the marathon itself. On the Saturday of week 15, having dropped my family off at the airport to go back to Poland for half term, I managed to get back in time to do my first park run at Tooting Common and I managed an official time of 22 minutes and 3 seconds. And week 16, final week of the plan with the marathon on the Sunday, I sacked off one of the easy runs because I had to cycle to my mum's to take some radiators off her wall and then cycle to Wicks to get some stop ends. Oh, the glamour. Uh, so I ended up doing about 20 kilometres on the bike in total and I thought that was enough. Stay tuned. Don't forget to like and subscribe and hit the bell to get notified when I release the final episode of... Rich Runs a Marathon.